on, everybody? I am Deb. And I'm C. Marie. And we got Mr. Ty here with Torch Fitness. That's it. Hey. Yes, yes, yes. What's going on? What's going on, Ty? Man, everything is good. Yeah. Obviously, we have uh, been busy, been yes. building, been traveling, traveling. enjoying the family. So yes, everything's yes, good. Yes. Everything's I'm loving good. the hat, Ty. Thank you. I well, you know I'm a... Four, four, four. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes, I'm yes, always yes. a supporter. Right. And I, I got to wear it right now. You, you got know, just to. to. Oh, come on now. You know what I'm saying? I, I should have oh. rolled up in here. Forget this light work. On purpose. On purpose. Like you got to just throw away your little shirt. I got to okay. throw away my shirt for Jay. Yeah. All right. And I've been noticing you've been wearing this wind shirt a lot. Yes. yes. What's that about? So I've been doing like the wind. Um. It's kind of been like over a year. Mm -hmm. So during this transition with our company, uh, Torch Fitness, as we've been growing, we've been trying to figure out like what's the next step for us. You know, obviously when you're on the entrepreneur journey, there's so many different levels of winning, you know. Um, And I felt like we had grown um, to, you know, 26 different markets, blah, blah, blah. We've really grown, but we needed a new win. Okay, yeah. so do you do that every year? Do you have a new motto? Yeah, or? actually, okay. yeah, yeah. But um, this one really stuck because I knew we were going to make a big transition. Right. You know, um, as far as trying to really grow um, and sell or merger, you know, right. with our company. So I knew this could kind of have some right, legs right, right. to it. Um, so that's why we went with this one. And you, okay. you keep speaking about the, the merger and the elevation of Torch Fitness. Yeah. Tell us a, a, a lot of bit about <laughs> the merger. I'm excited about it because I I actually <laughs> worked with Torch Fitness for a second. Man. For, uh, a second. Before we get into the merger, though, can you yeah. just go back, back a little bit? Let's, you can know. we talk about him right. working for Torch oh Fitness my God. for a second? Look, what was I, he, now, what was listen, he like? I used to be buff for this like. show. <laughs> so we don't necessarily technically have uniforms, right? Right. But we give you a shirt. Uh-huh. So we give Dom a shirt. Why this Joker? What he cut to it? I knew you was gonna sleeve. say that. I we're, knew you was gonna I'm say like, that. God, we're a corporate <laughs> wellness <laughs> company. You don't need to look sexy. <laughs> no, you already know he can now keep a shirt on. <laughs> if it has buttons, okay. he gonna button it down. Next thing I see on the internet is this Joker with sleeves <laughs> cut, nip, nipples poking out of the shirt. Oh my, said, god. oh my god, this is off brand. Oh, I already know. He stays kilter. with the nipple. <laughs> I gotta get my body back know. like that. I I need to sign up for the Torch Fitness app. You do. You do. No, Good I don't night. know if you want uh... <laughs> to. But I had to say that, yo, that was that was my one memory of, of you working with us. But I'm going to tell you, that shirt. thank you for that, though, because I was going through a rough time mm. with entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I got my little check from Torch Fitness. Yeah, yeah. Check is Pay a little gas bill, you know man. Right. <laughs> Some. Hey, I appreciated that. I ain't have to file it on my taxes. I ain't right. Yeah, yeah. Also, it was on the table. <laughs> I got a W two. You got a ten ninety nine. I'm just wondering. We legit. We legit. But that's that's a that's so true. What I didn't realize when I started Torch Fitness is that how many other entrepreneurs it would give opportunities. To. Yes. Because yes. it's like the U economy. You right. know, when I was going up, I sound old. But when I was coming up, there was not like little sub jobs you can do to exactly. survive to get you in your yeah. next level. But I guess back to that question. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell them what Torch Fitness, <laughs> fitness is about. That's how it started weird. and everything. Yeah, I know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tell them what, what Torch is Fitness is all about. Ten years in the making. Exactly. Ten years, yes. yeah. So basically, it's kind of a crazy, but I'll condense the story. Okay. Come on with so it. about 13 years ago, I was... Um, running a like moving and shipping company and it was going well we were starting to, you know i started to learn how to really really scale the business we i loved it i was making some money i didn't love it but i was making some money i loved mm-hmm. that part mm-hmm. but it wasn't my passion you know i i noticed that i was like man if i was to do this moving thing it's just not my passion it's not what i want to do and so as i was doing that I started to think about what else I can truly do as an entrepreneur. And um, I went out and I was just trying different things. So I started a marketing company. 
And when I started this marketing company, it was basically like old school, just passing out flyers. Right, right. So I would pl- pass out flyers. I had like Converse as an account, different people like that. So I would just pass out flyers on doors, pass out flyers uh, at mailboxes, little stuff like right, that, right. like truly grassroots, you know, uh, level marketing. Right. And so I met a company or a client that was doing boot camps. He was doing boot camps all over the city. And so all these little boot camps he was doing and we were passing out the flyers. And I noticed when I was passing out the flyers, people were like, oh, I wanna do this, you know what I mean? Like I love the ideal of his boot camp. And so as I was passing out the flyers and I started to get to know him, I, I actually asked him, hey, can I come to the boot camp? So I started attending the boot camp. I was just a normal client, paid for the boot camp and everything. I started attending the boot camp and I loved what he was doing. I actually went to the one in Stone Mountain. And so I, as I was attending the boot camp, I started, my wheels started turning like, oh, I see how this is working. I remember he was charging $1.99 per person. He had like 30 people per class. He would run like three classes in the morning, a class in the um, afternoon, then another three classes at night. I was, you know, right. anybody can do the math. Right. Like, right. Like, I don't wait. So like, I was like, like this this person. Business model. Right. No overhead. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. So just like a young entrepreneur, I took him out to lunch and I said, hey, um, Shannon, I would like to partner with you. And he did what I would do to somebody that did the same thing exactly. with me. <laughs> Hell no. no. Right. Like, why would I partner with <laughs> right. you? Right. Like, right. you bring marketing, but like, really, why would I? I'm doing well at what I'm doing. And I actually told him, I was like, I like what you're doing, but I noticed there was a gap in that. So say, for example, if a person is going to go train, what if it rains? Mm-hmm. What if it's cold? I notice your numbers drop, depending on weather. You know what I mean? Right, and right, then right. a key thing so say if you go on vacation and you don't want to train that month, what happens to that money? It's a loss. It's a loss. Right. If you go, you know, you want to transfer to Ohio, that you lost a client. Right. So I was like, I think we can do this, but I, I believe that we could do it where uh, we can maybe do it corporately, mm. where corporate would pay. And so obviously he was like, nope, I'm good. So I was like, all right, well, that I did what I was supposed to do from a character standpoint. In my you opinion, tried. I right. tried to partner. And he didn't want to partner. And so I started going out, and this is before Uber, this is before any of those things. So I started going out trying to, I didn't know a location. So I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to do it. So I started going out trying to find different places to hold these classes, and I could not find any places to hold the class, any place to hold the class. So I was going out with my friends, Johnny and Lo, and we were at this restaurant. And we randomly meet these girls. The story will all make sense. But we <laughs> randomly meet these girls. Shout out to Johnny. Shout out to Johnny and Love. <laughs> <Johnny Mer. laughs> we randomly meet these girls. And obviously my wife knows this story, so it's okay. So we randomly meet <laughs> these girls. <laughs> exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> she knows. Happily married. So <laughs> we randomly meet these girls. And, you know, towards the end of the night, she asks the question that every girl asks you. What do you do? Right, yeah. <laughs> and at the time, I really was kind of like, I don't know. I felt like a loser because I don't know what I do. I know what I want to do. Right, right. But I don't know what I do. So I was like, well, I run this fitness company. And she was like, oh, that's cool. Like, what type of fitness company? Like a gym? I was like, nah, not necessarily a gym. We just do classes. I knew a concept. I didn't know what right, right. I was going to do. She was like, well, that's crazy because I know a person at an apartment that's looking to have classes ran. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I can do that. And she was like, yeah, I'll put you in contact. So this is, I just met her and she wow. said uh, an apartment. I never thought in my brain. This is blowing my this mind. Is that's crazy. Can you, tell which right. one, can you tell which apartment it was? It was Enzo. Enzo. It was oh, Enzo. Wow. Shut up. No, no way. That no was joke. the first one. First one ever. Get out of here. First one ever. Enzo wow. and Glenwood. And so she literally, the. The next morning, sent the sent the email out. The next day, I was going in there for an interview. And so at the time, I didn't know multifamily. I didn't know apartments. Mm-hmm. And they were like, hey, we want to run these classes. And there was a different type of concept that they even wanted to run classes on site. Right. But I didn't know how to price. Right. I didn't know how to bill. I didn't know any of that stuff because it was totally different. I thought it would be a fitness Uber, but I didn't know how it would work. I was do it. Right. And so 
It just so happened that this apartment was an owner-operated apartment, which is very key mm -hmm. because the owner was hands-on. Mm -hmm. He was really in mm -hmm. there. So he kind of helped me in the industry. Like I knew the industry language from working there. So he, was, he said, hey, we want to run three classes. We want to do Zumba, Span, and Boot Camp. So obviously I had no Zumba instructor. Right. I had no <laughs> Span instructor. Right, right. All I knew is that he said he wanted to run these classes. He wanted to start next week. I said, all right, I can do it. You said it, you could do it? Oh, oh my, my God. God. Hey, for the first two weeks, I had to teach Zumba. Are you serious? Where's this spin. video this at? Is, oh, I love <laughs> to see Zumba. the video. It was the worst experience <laughs> oh, of my, my life. But I knew I had that opportunity. Right. And I've always been taught, like I said, at this point, this was my third business, as you know, the moving and shipping company, the marketing, and now the fitness. Right. And so, I, I knew what just to make things happen. Just to go. Just to go. Right. Boom. That and goes back to faking it until you make it low key to me. Yeah. I mean, he didn't know exactly. He wasn't really all the way in there, but he had a vision. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it starts. And he he was talking, like he owned it. You owned it when you talked to right. the girl. I think an, a, a key is that my intentions has always been pure. Mm. My result might not be what I wanted, but my intention, right. my natural intention was pure. Yeah. Because that's what I knew I wanted to do. Right. And uh, another thing, even like, like I said, I met her the next day, two days, I was in a business meeting. So know. most people will overthink this, right? They right. say, Me. oh, I need a logo. <laughs> right. I need, need a business this. card. I need, boom, boom. I didn't. You know, a key to the first part of my, even now, really, is that I always went in like, I can do it, but hey, I'm new, allow, like, teach me. Teach me, right. So I, I went in with him like, hey, teach me See? this business, but I can do it. I don't want you to lose confidence in me, but at the same time, I want to learn. I want to be a part of right. this industry. So you're telling me, too, um, what I gathered from that is... Faking it until you make it can get you in a pickle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. In a lot of situations. But, see, but that's where a lot of us go wrong. So we're going to look like experts, like we're already, oh, that's you know, successful. Yeah. But really, when you humble yourself, yes. you might find somebody that's willing to go exactly. ahead and, and put their confidence in you anyway. That is true. And no matter what age. I like no that. No matter what age. age. And yep. you can see there's an inner confidence. When you say fake it to you make it, what I think is... You have to always be confident, mm -hmm. even if you have yeah. not accomplished this home run goal. Right. Exactly. You got to. You, you got to know you can do it anyway. In yeah. right. You know what I mean? But you can't fake it like you already hit that exactly. home run. Yeah. So if I would have went into that first interview, it was like, yeah, right. man, we got doing. five other buildings. Right. Right. That's not through yes, you exactly. anyway. That's not right. faking it until yes. you make it because they already know. Right. Exactly. All right, Absolutely. so let's go ahead and get into it. Like, <laughs> as you kind of progress through um, turning Torch Fitness into what it is today, like, yeah. what were some of those things that you were like, man, you are not expecting to come up, but you handled anyways? Wow. So the first thing was I didn't have it wasn't Torch Fitness. Okay, what was it? I had no name. You had, oh God. Yeah, I had <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so when did Torch so Fitness become Torch Fitness? This is the funny part. And, I'm, best, like, and I'm, I'm really quick. I'm, I hate to cut you off. Oh. I want you to tell all. Of, I want you to bring Nikki into it too and oh, tell yeah. all of that. Like know, he has an course, amazing wife, of course, of um, course. and she's. She's a, a, a big part of this as well. Oh, she's the part. Yeah, the yes, part. Yes, I, yes. That's why, I, yeah, as I tell you the mistakes, you would notice they stop. <laughs> <laughs> Those like things stop happening right. during a certain time period when she was a woman, y'all. Shout out to the queen for real. <laughs> um, so when I first started, I, I didn't have a name, didn't have shirts. I would wear Nike shirts, right? Mm -hmm. And um, my, my best friend, Charles Sharper, who runs. Healthy Youth USA mm -hmm. has this company called the Business Tap, and the Business Tap with this networking thing, and I loved it. And so I didn't even call him to tell him. So I was gonna name my company, ooh, the Fitness Tap. And so <laughs> <laughs> drum roll, the, 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 the Fitness Tap. <laughs> and so I put the Fitness Tap. This is my brother. I put the Fitness Tap on the flyer, and I'm like, I'm gonna be the Fitness Tap. 
<laughs> this joker called me. He's like, <laughs> He was like, hey, bruh, um, no. you know I love you, <laughs> but, but nah. I'm going to need you not to use <laughs> You're not about to just make me your twin, right? My, my name. Right. <laughs> right. Like, right you know, my I nose. thought, you know me, fitness <laughs> tap, business tap, there's some things we can do. He was like, nah. And the crazy thing was, thank God for good people. Mm -hmm. Part of the journey, as you can tell, the yeah. young lady that actually hooked me up with the building, was still, she's lived at a building to this day. I mean, so Charles, every single part of my journey has an important person mm -hmm. that was in it. Even going back to school, even going back to everything, every single transition was a person mm -hmm. that I actually listened to. Yes. Right. Yeah. That I, did, I listened to. So Charles was like, look, bro, you can't have the fitness tap, but what I will do is I'll introduce you to my logo person and the person I use for branding. So I said, all right, I appreciate it. And that was the only time me and Charles really had like, cause I was weird. I was, I felt offended as a young entrepreneur. Right. I was like, man, why wouldn't you let me rock? Right, right, like, why right. wouldn't you let me do that? I didn't really understand right, right. what I had done. And so thank God he was way more mature than me at that time where when he first taught me, I was really offended. So we didn't talk for a week. And then he called me back. Thank God, once again, he was more mature and said, hey, bro, this don't have to be a friendship issue. Right. Just understand that that's not how you should do it. Right. He had been an entrepreneur longer than me at that time. But I will give you some resources to help you exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. And so he was mature enough to do that. That's why even during this whole transition, I've always thanked Charles. Now, I do everything I can for, for his for um, his nonprofit, for the Sharper Ball, for anything yes. I can do, because I he didn't have to do right. that. He didn't have to take right. the time. We could have been like, he could have pride. And just be cut like, you off. Right. Right. You know, he was looking at it like yeah. a source yeah. of inspiration. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was just yeah. like, yeah. 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 right. yeah. All of that, is, all right. that, it'd be miscommunication. It's, it's, all it's always miscommunication. So anyway, moving forward, he um, met, uh, introduced me to a young lady named um, Cherie Mays, who runs Geek Girls. So Geek Girl is the actual original person that sent me all different types of logos. Mm -hmm. And I was so focused on the mission that that stuff wasn't me. So like I said before, I had three other companies. So I didn't consider this my baby, which ended up being a good thing for me. But I never considered my baby. It was a mm -hmm. business. Right, right, right. right. You know what I mean? And I, I, I come from the era where I looked at Apple and Nike and, and all these companies. And if you read these books of these amazing men, right. the name didn't mean anything. It was the culture yeah. that brought the name up. It was like right. what people believed in that brought. So the name could have been anything. It was what we were going to do. So I never really got caught up in it. But she sent me some different logos. Torch Fitness sound good. It, it ran off the tongue. I liked it. So that's what we went with. It wow. was no, oh, I did research. Because like, yeah, I've been talking okay, to young so entrepreneurs you all the time. It, right. It's young entrepreneurs. And no, not. That's right, cool. Yeah. That's, that's your process. Yeah. I was focused on the grind, focused on the work. Right. I, I knew whatever it was going right. to be, right, right. It, will, it will work out. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we end up with Torch Fitness. Thank, hey, shout out to Geek Girl. <laughs> um, and we still, once again, key. We still use her to this day. Yes. She still gave involved. me her information. There you go. To yes. this day, uh, I mean, another thing with all our people, the buildings, the Enzo, the people that worked at Enzo, I still have them as clients today, the people that work there, like the manager, the assistant manager, the owner, all those people are still involved in some type of way. Charles, Geek Girl. And so that was that first journey with the name, you know, but... So that was a little hiccup. And then moving forward, you asked another question about like what's some tough things that happened. Yeah, that had to another thing was I had some challenges with license, my license. Okay. So this is crazy. When I moved from Nebraska to from Michigan to Nebraska to Atlanta. All right. I had tickets and I didn't realize I had these tickets. Mm -hmm. So I was living in um, by Snow Mountain at the time and I was going over to Enzo. And so I'm driving and I randomly go to this stop, this random driving stop or whatever. And when I went there, 
They were like, hey, they check your ID. Right. And you know they came back, hey, you got a warrant. I was like, what? What? I got a warrant? You know, I had never experienced that. Yeah, right. You know, I don't want a warrant. So, all right. So, what I'm supposed to do? You like, what I do? I didn't what? know what that meant. Right. You don't know. like My heart didn't right. drop. My right. heart felt like, all right, what I got to do? Okay. Right. So, right. So, right. Not get out the car. <laughs> 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 like, okay. What I need to do? So, yeah, like, it's cool. I had some of my trainer's checks. I was dropping off checks. Like, okay. I was dropping off people's checks. Right. right. And so... Like literally, he's like, "You need to get out the car." I'm like, "Get out the car! This, this don't right. sound good." I was, right. like, <laughs> I was like, "Let me call like my mom." Right. Right. I got a warrant, warrant, like a real warrant. Oh, you know what I'm saying? That, that made me authentic, though. Right. You know what I mean? I got some, you know what I mean, under my belt now. Right. Right. So real, but street cred, street cred. For real, I got street cred. Right. 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 I had a warrant too, y'all. I had a warrant too. I've been locked down too. I've been locked down. I've been on lockdown. I did for real, but yeah, yeah. I did. Louis Vuitton shoes though. Ooh, see. but that's part of my past. No, I found out I had a warrant during a job application process. She's like, you ain't telling me about this. I'm Ooh. like, I ain't know. <laughs> Yo, so look at this. We've all. I didn't. So when it happened, listen. This is the crazy. All right, y'all made great points. When it happened, I thought I was the only person in the world that had been through that. Mm. I was so embarrassed. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was so embarrassed. That's right. And so right. I was so the I was like riding my bike. So after after I get out the pen, after I get out, I get a couple tattoos. I'm right. swole at right. this time after my two days in the joint. So <laughs> change his name to Abdul. <laughs> Hey, that's my middle name. Don't I know. Uh, not, no, this is, this is so key in this journey because it, it matters, right? So I go and I'm embarrassed mm-hmm. because I go back to one of my newer accounts and they had Googled since I was gone. I was gone for two. I missed my class. They had Googled oh, me man. and it said, you know, Tyrone mm-hmm. McMath, you know, and so they literally... I was going like I was about to teach a class. Right. They literally came in and was like, hey, you can't teach here. No. They told me I couldn't teach there. It was, I was just starting to do a little something. And so I was like, wow, then everybody's going to know. Right. If you know me, you call me Tig all the way up. And then Tyrone, I literally changed my name because of that because incident. Of that. Oh, my God. So that's why I went to Ty. So I'm going through all this, and it's a tough time, but I'm trying to, like, make it happen because I I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in my mission. So the crazy part is, um, as I'm doing this, I need money to make up. Like, I need money. So I go, and um, I go to different places. I'm trying to apply for a job. Okay. But people aren't hiring. Like, they're not hiring me. It was just like. It was crazy that they they looked at Google me. I don't know, oh, man, or whatever right. the case. I just couldn't find a job. Right. And so the only job I found was at the Colony Square, where I can clean the equipment at night. So I was cleaning the equipment at night at Colony Square. It was like ten dollars an hour, and then working the front desk. But I, I wanted to do that because it, it was overnight, and it didn't take away from my grind in the morning going right. to buildings. So I was doing that consistently. So. Make a long story short, I'm at Enzo, which is one of our more popular buildings. I'm going through Enzo, and I, um, one of the we were like running the people outside of the building through the neighborhood. So as we're running the people through the neighborhood, one of the neighbors was like, "Hey, what type of boot camp is this?" And I was like, "Oh, it's just a boot camp that we do at Enzo." She's not a resident. This person is not a resident. Okay. And this is how good God is. This is like everything happens for a reason. I'm running these people through the neighborhood. This woman sees us and she wants to join the boot camp. So then I say, well, seems like it makes sense. Go to Enzo. Oh, yeah, this is great marketing. So I introduce her and she starts coming to the boot camp with her husband. She then posts about the boot camp in her little news feed um, through, the, uh, through the neighborhood. And then another young lady named B ends up seeing the news feed. Um, B runs Athena's Warehouse, a nonprofit. She's okay. doing amazing things. But um, she comes to the boot camp. So she loves the boot camp. Um, the other uh, family um, 
was coming in, but they ended up stopped coming to the boot camp, and B was just always there. So B enter, uh, brings her sisters, Fee, she brings Lauren, all this stuff, right? And so I'm just working the boot camps, and I'm just like on it. Like I'm so focused. So B, around uh, a year after her coming, she was like, hey, Ty, um, can you maybe sponsor or help us out because we're trying to do prom dresses for girls that need um, that can't afford them. Right, right. Um, and I don't have much money. Right. So I'm like, hey, I can um, get Charles to DJ. So I got Charles to DJ, and then I was like, I can donate like a hundred bucks. I forget what it was, a hundred bucks maybe. And so I get all my boys, Johnny Lowe's, everybody, to go to the Athena's warehouse. It was like a dope prom that they were doing to raise money for these for these girls in prom dresses. Just so happens that this a dope prom, and I was on a date. At this is no problem. Of course, uh, shout out to Match.com. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on a date during that time, and just so happened, my wife, who obviously I didn't know at the time, she was there and she was volunteering, selling tickets, selling like yeah, raffle tickets. And I saw her, you know, walking through, and I was like, oh wow, you know, I noticed she was beautiful, gorgeous, and I saw her. And at this time, obviously, I'm on a date. Right. So, you know, she goes up and re she requests a song from the DJ. And this is how I knew I was going to be in love with her. Because she, it was a adult prom, non-profit. And she requests Future Magic. Like, the strip club anthem <laughs> at an adult prom. <laughs> so, so I was bad. like, oh, yeah. Oh God, so, <laughs> magic. I was like, oh. You know what I mean? But she my requests, type of girl. My, I said, this is my type of girl. <laughs> Oh and so God. I didn't say nothing to her the whole night, but I remember her. And uh, the next day, she actually reached out via Facebook and said, hey, I want to attend your class. So that's how Nicole came into the yes. story. That's, yes. that's kind of how she came into the story. All right, that so moving amazing. forward a little bit now, yeah. when did Nicole kind of, was it her decision to get into it? Was it yours? Was yeah. it, how did it go? Was it just the obvious choice yeah. she's a nutritionist the, the crazy part is that so she was working in the lab that's the skill set that she actually brought to me mm -hmm. so if you know anybody that works in the lab mm -hmm. they only have right or wrong they don't have like middle ground right in the lab. it's right, right or wrong right. and when she started when I started dating Nicole if you know my wife and y'all know my wife you know that she's like Boom. She don't play. Right. She's right. really on it. Okay. And so immediately she came in and she started, you know, and it was one of the first relationships where I was just like uh, as authentic as who I am. This is me. So right. she knew about the license. She knew about different things. And so she literally came in and just started straightening things up without any money. Just started boom, 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 straightening everything up. My books how I kept things and she was just doing this. We were dating mm -hmm. and she was just saw a need and started helping out. But I noticed like, wow, everything is changing with her. Like the systems is rolling, everything is rolling. So I was like, hey, I really think that this is something that we can do. I think this has legs. The thing is with Nicole, her dad is a lawyer. Her mom is like very, very um, up with Verizon Wireless. So I really had to convince them exactly. why their daughter right. who just got their masters who was supposed to go out and make all this money. Right. Why should you work with me when right. I have really not a proven track record? Right. I just had a vision. And so they they were amazing parents like they are now. And they were like, hey, long as you get an accountant, she's on the paperwork, you know, everything we can we can rock. Right. And so okay. that's how it all happened. And, and I went in and I did which now paid off amazingly like she was on the paperwork mm -hmm. and she was my official partner right when she started it wasn't like hey we partnered kind no. of sort of legit like, legitimized right. paperwork I mean that's kind of how it happened okay so let's fast uh, forward a little bit yeah yeah I know it so much because now Torch has how many markets are you in how many states like yeah so we're in 26 different markets um where we have over like 70,000 um, units. Okay. It's basically like we literally created a 
a movement. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Like, yeah. And you're now um, acquired by Valley Living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, with the Torch, with Torch, we started building, building, building and scaling. And if anybody has a business that scale, they understand some of the issues that happens when you scale. We were growing so fast. We were the number, we are still the number one, but we we had built such a business where there was such a high demand. Right. And most young entrepreneurs don't understand that because I had scaled fast before with my moving company, I realized you how you can it. employ, you can employ by moving too fast because you're looking to know all the money you can make. You're not understanding what you need to put in for the systems and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So as I was continuing to build, 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 I realized like, all right, it's going to have to be some type of shift. And this was probably around six months ago to a year. I knew we were either going to have to get investors or we were going to have to um, hopefully sell. I didn't think about being acquired by like a billion dollar private equity company. Sure, right. hundred In our industry. Because I didn't know. So I thought we could sell to like a Orange Theory, a Peloton, somebody that wanted to be in the industry. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to the right person at the right time. So... Six months ago, I go to my lawyer. I said, hey, I think I think we should look at selling. He literally laughs and like, you can't sell. Mm. Like, what can you sell? Like, right. we're so unknown. Like, they don't know what we really do because it's labor intensive. So he like laughs at me. This is a person that's seen me vacation. He's seen, he knows we the make it. The you live. Right, right. right. <laughs> it's not like right. a facade. You see right, right, what right. we're doing. And he laughed. He didn't think we can sell. Um, and this is like six months ago. So I'm fast forward. One of my mentors, Tracy, who I met at Enzo, who mm-hmm. had moved up the ranks. It was her birthday and I asked her out to breakfast. Now, the thing about this is that that breakfast, it was um, Ocean's first day of school. Oh, wow. And so, shout and it just Ocean. so has shout out to Ocean. <laughs> right. So uh, on that night, Ocean was sick. And then Nicole got sick. And then I got sick. I mean, it was only one of the only times we, the whole family had some type of bug. Right. And so I, it started with Ocean. She got better. It started with Nicole. She got better. And then it went to me. So that morning, Nicole couldn't get out the bed. And so I had to drop <laughs> off Ocean and make this meeting. Now, this is a mentor, but she's moved up. So I didn't want to miss this meeting. Right. Um, and so... Even on the way dropping off Ocean to school, I'm throwing up. Oh I'm my like God. throwing up in the right. car. And I'm not a throw up. This doesn't happen. I'm throwing up in the car. And I drop Ocean off and I'm thinking in my head, like, man, maybe I should reschedule with Tracy. Right. Like, this is crazy. You can't show up like I this. Can't, right? I, I, can't <laughs> right. eat. I can't hold no food right. down. It, but it was her birthday and I was glad that she even gave me some time. Some right. time. Yeah. Like, she is very busy. They run a lot of different communities. Right, right. She gave me the time that morning. I couldn't even eat. I remember going in the bathroom, throwing up there. Like, I couldn't eat. Wow. But she was like, so what's going on? And I was like, well, I'm really thinking about transitioning with my company. I don't know if I should get investors. I'm asking her advice. Right. So she was like, well, I do know Valet Living is actually, like, buying different companies right now. You should talk to you should talk to them. Talk to I, them. I, I yeah. didn't even know who Valley. I didn't. I knew Valley Living obviously, but I didn't know any of this right. because they're not in our industry. They're not in the fitness industry, you know. So she says, "Hey, you should do that." It just so happens this is why God is amazing. Just so happened who she emailed was a guy named Sid McDonald. Mm-hmm. I was in. A, I was on a panel with Sid. Get out of here. Years. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, it's like it's back. It's like it's all meant to be, though. Like, it happened. That's crazy. Years ago, I was on the panel with Sid. And he's one of those people on Facebook that don't never like nothing. Right. But pay attention to everything. He was that. So he was just paying attention to what I was doing. So when Tracy sent it, she was like, hey, I think I might know a guy uh, in our company. Well, it's not even a thing. There's a guy in our company that's in charge of that. So... I had never been through a sale, never been through a merger, didn't know any of this stuff. Right. And so when I met Valet, they had told me their mission, that they want to be the leader in uh, multi-family amenities. And obviously fitness, we're an amenity. And they had tried to do it on their own, but they couldn't, you know, do everything that we that have done, do, that right. they currently do. Yeah. 
And so they have been studying us before. Are you serious? Even, That's uh, crazy. I'm they like. They have been studying us before I have even met with them. I didn't even know that. I had no idea. I was just, you know, if you know me, I just post consistently. Yeah, I'm just, consistent. You, I, you, you, you are consistent. I stay right. consistent. You I never consistent. was great. Right. Yes. I've never been great at social media. What, what I've done is kept it simple and I was consistent. You know what I mean? That's what I've learned through throughout the time. So they had noticed that we, boom, boom, been in buildings, doing everything that we've done. And it was literally, I met them in April. And Nicole didn't even show up at the first meeting. Right. She was, you know, Nicole was like that. She's like, call me when y'all are serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nicole. They didn't show up to the first meeting. Fast forward, we vibe from there. I fly down to Tampa. We vibe. And a month after that, we sold our company. You had mentioned how consistent you are. Mm -hmm. and he's very consistent. I mean, if you look on your social media and you follow, uh, do the math, yeah. that's where they can find yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, I think is so clever because his last name is McMath. Yeah, do know. the math. He, he opened my eyes to don't like base your success off of how many likes you may get. Mm -hmm. um, how many people are following you? I think so many of us have that misconception, and we're some people are out here buying likes and buying this. He's just consistent. Yeah. Tell us about that. Like, well, yeah. that's from being a loser early. <laughs> <laughs> when you are a loser so early, you define your own success. See what was the best things that happened to me is I had some of my worst losses early. Mm -hmm. Relationships had big losses. Businesses had big losses. Um, Society-wise, I had big losses. So when those things kind of hit during the social media era and never, whether I had whatever many likes or no likes, right. it didn't affect my it process right. because I, I knew what I was doing at that point. And I had got to a point where those that wasn't currency for me. Like, I never looked at likes as currency. Um for me, even popularity is currency. Like to this day, I meet people all the time that's like, keep it up. You know what I mean? And I'll be like, I'm doing better than right. you. <laughs> you know <laughs> you're talking to? Like, right. But, exactly. but they don't know. I'm in, I'm in a hidden industry. It's like working in the airport, right? It's its own yeah. industry. Like I meet one of my biggest things is like fitness professionals. I get around fitness professionals, these really, really popular trainers, and they're like, hey, I see you doing your thing out there, and they don't, I have no they idea. They don't know, for real, for real. Right. 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 And so, those things really taught me, though, you know, like, I always was very clear on, once again, freedom was my mission, then non-emotional money. That's a lesson. Like, you never know who you're talking to. Treat everybody good. Oh, my God. Treat everybody Especially. good. <laughs> I guess we're going to get into this last question. Yeah. If you could tell your younger self anything, what would it be? Mm. If I could tell my younger self. Entrepreneurial self, when you're just getting started in that first business, mm. what would you tell yourself? Be all in. Be all in. What I notice with entrepreneurs, um, they get on a journey and they're not sold out. And so, say for example, if you're an entrepreneur and you say, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do real estate. I'm gonna mow lawns. Whatever the case may be," they are in to a certain point. So, right when that first thing happens, where it's a little bit of difficulty, they fold. Right. Or right when something good happens, they think they they made it. They made right. it. They so did. now they right. want to add. If I mow lines, now I'm going to do the weeds and now I'm going to go do the roof. You know what I mean? They start yeah. adding things yeah. and mm -hmm. what makes them not all in. Like the, the great people, the Steve Jobs of the world, the, the, the Derek Jeter's, LeBron James, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's, Oprah, what they did was perfect something first. I actually, let me tell you how, how what you say, you know, people are listening. You may not even know. Yeah. Uh, I just sent this because he gave this sermon, you know, somewhat of this sermon. Yeah, I call it a sermon because yeah. it touched my soul. You know? <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> but he gave this on. Um, yeah, he actually has a show as well, a YouTube channel, um, Failure Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fell uh, forward. Which is, fell, fell forward. 
Fridays, uh, which is amazing. I tune in. That's myself. what's up. That's yes. what's up. Um, so just as much as you may feel like, you know, you're learning from us, we're learning from you. Um, well, I've been learning from you for a long time. We've been learning from each other. <laughs> We've man, been learning from each other. I've definitely been learning from you, man. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, he gave this the other day, and I sent this to Tasha. I was like, this is, this is very vital information. I said, because, you know, with doing slight work, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We're... We just want to perfect. Yeah. You, we want to perfect. We don't want to put too much on our table. We want to help. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I feel like once that's perfected, like once you feel like you've helped, uh, you never help enough people. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. What? Like, <laughs> I just feel like I can help. If I could, I help the world. But you, you, you know are. what I'm saying? You and, are. And uh, I, I agree with everything yeah. that you said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Thanks, yeah. so Ty. Give us your social media information. Yeah. Where can they find you? How can yeah. people yeah. find you? So first, you can always obviously go to Team Torch, um, at Team Torch on all social media platforms. And then uh, my personal one is Do The Math Guy. And uh, that's what you were talking about. That's, that's that whole felt for it. Obviously, just like you guys, we just want to help. I yes, you know, because yes. I know we all go through the same thing. So, uh, do the math guy, uh, Instagram, and uh, yeah, you can find me there. LinkedIn. All right, right, man. Thank you, well, Ty. This was awesome. Yeah, thank and you guys. Um, if thank you guys you. need me to be a trainer again, with <laughs> yeah, I just want to get back on the payroll. Now really cool. We want to get on the payroll <laughs> now. Now we're too corporate for people to be cutting exactly. off their shirts. Exactly. You gonna have us? You know what I mean? Nah, I had to I tell you about slight work. Come here with your nipple out. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, but this has been amazing, man. Awesome. Y'all got it here first. I am Deb. I am T. Marie. And we're here with the amazing Ty with Torch Fitness, man. This is going to be epic. Can't wait. Can't wait to uh, see what happens in the future, oh, man. Thank big. you for coming. All right. That's Thank it. You.